Today we'll be discussing the concept of humanism, the term generally applied to the overreaching social and intellectual philosophies of the Renaissance era, in which the beauty of the individual was elevated to preeminence. To put it in simpler terms, humanism is the belief that man has beauty, worth, and dignity. Therefore, life here on earth should be cherished rather than simply endured. Before we delve headlong into humanism and the effect it had on the individual, we must first discuss the reason behind its development. During the Middle Ages, between about the 3rd and 13th centuries, life and culture were primarily focused on the church and religion. However, toward the beginning of the 14th century, the power of the church began to greatly decline. This decline is the main reason for the development of humanism. As people became less interested in thinking about God, the afterlife, and the saints, and more interested in thinking about themselves, their natural world, and the here and now. Many historians believe there were two main causes of this decline. The first being the bubonic plague which ravaged Europe and killed over half of many countries' populations. As the plague devastated and destroyed, the church was helpless to stop it. People prayed, people filled cathedrals, yet loved ones continued to die. This led many to disenchantment, causing them to seek out other explanations beyond the spiritual for human suffering and loss. The second and perhaps most profound reason for the decline of the church was the rise of the market economy. As money began to be amassed through trade, the power of the church declined even more. From this rose city-states and monarchies governed more by economy than religious restriction. All in all, the church became too stuffy, too impractical, and too rigid. Thus, it was replaced with the secular human's capacity to learn, create, and especially enjoy. In short, it was replaced with the idea of humanism, where the study of human progress and human nature is at the center of all things. Now that we've covered the reason for the development of humanism, we can dive into what this actually meant for the individual in the areas of independence and interests. First, humanism radically changed the idea of individual independence. Prior to the 14th century, much of Europe, and especially Northern Europe, practiced the feudal system in which wealth was based on land ownership. Generally speaking, under this system, People were seen as part of a collective whole to keep feudal society and the manor system intact. Serfs, or the poor workers, were tools used by the wealthy to work their land holdings and keep their wealth intact. Adding to this imprisonment of sorts, the church believed that to be concerned with yourself and your rights was nothing more than arrogance, rebellion, and sin. One should only be concerned with obeying the rules and following them without question. However, as we mentioned earlier, thanks to the plague and the rise of trade, the power of the church and feudalism shrank, and the importance of the individual grew. Man and human nature were no longer seen as totally sinful and in need of punishment, but instead as independent, beautiful, and individual creations of God. This is particularly seen in the writings of Petrarch, the father of humanism, in which he states, Sameness is the mother of disgust, variety the cure. Or in other words, go on and express yourself. These ideals were further expressed in the famous speech, The Dignity of Man, in which the renowned orator Marandola states, You with no limit or no bound may choose for yourself. Again, he's saying, you're an individual, you're an independent, you're free. This brings us to how humanism changed not only the idea of individual freedom, but also how humanism changed the interest of the individual. Remember, up to this point, anything not centered around the church was considered sinful. Man and earth were wicked, and only heaven and the afterlife were worthy to encompass human thought. Humanism turned this idea completely on its head, as scholars, artists, and writers began centering their works on man and his experience while here on earth rather than in the afterlife. Instead of spending their time and efforts on penance and self-denial, 
humanists resurrected the ideals of the ancient Greeks who placed the study and progress of human nature at the center of their interest. This is plainly seen in the writings of Dante's Divine Comedy as he explains his individual journey to God rather than a journey to God through the church. This led many to be curious about a personal relationship with God rather than a religion sculpted by the church. Interest in the human rather than the afterlife is also seen in the famous work The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio. In this humanistic writing, ten young people fleeing the Black Death hide out in an abandoned villa and fill their days and nights by telling each other rather racy and torrid tales of love and romance. Ironically, during a time of such great death and crisis, the author chooses not to have their interest turned toward the medieval church ideals of repentance and penance, but instead to enjoying the moments in which they live. Again, humanism wins the day as the individual chooses to enjoy the human story rather than the old church ideals of pain and punishment. And this, in itself, summarizes the beauty of the individual in the eyes of the humanist. And now to completely summarize humanism. It is the term generally applied to the overreaching social and intellectual philosophies of the Renaissance era. Humanism, or the ideal that man has beauty, worth, and dignity, developed as the church declined. This decline mainly occurred for two reasons. Number one, the carnage of the Black Death and the church's inability to explain or stop the suffering led many to look for answers outside the church walls. And number two, the rise of the market economy, which replaced feudalism and freed the individual from serfdom, allowed them to make money, grow, and think on their own. Amidst this backdrop, Humanism changed the thoughts of the day in the areas of individual independence and individual interests. As for individual independence, in the eyes of the humanists, people were no longer seen as tools for the wealthy or objects of God's wrath, but instead as individuals created by God with their own unique gifts and talents. Variety, differences, and creativity were embraced rather than shunned. Also, in the areas of individual interest, Humanistic thoughts were turned to the here and now, while the capacity of man to live and enjoy was celebrated. It reintroduced to humanity the Greek ideal that life on earth should truly be lived rather than simply endured, and that man, not the church, is at the center of all things. Curiosity was cultivated rather than swelched, and life on earth was seen as something to be cherished rather than simply suffered through.